Welcome back to another OnlineDrummer.com drum lesson. I'm Nate Brown, and in this lesson, I'm going to go over a groove from The Sweetest Taboo by Sade, and you'll need that. Uh, you can get it at OnlineDrummer.com. Uh, during a Skype drum lesson, Lee actually had asked about this song. So thanks, Lee. It's a great groove, and I'm glad you uh, had asked about it. And if you're interested in learning something specific, like a groove or a song, or you want to take you know, longer-term drum lessons, check the link out below. I uh, just started Skype lessons. This groove has a really laid-back feel. And actually, in the entire song, this groove just drives the whole uh, rhythm, except in the middle there is a, a about 20, 30 seconds where it changes a little bit. But it's just laid back, and it's very similar to the bossa nova. So you'll see on that sheet music at the bottom, I included the uh, original bossa nova. So I'll start just by playing the, the main groove. Now on the sheet music, you're going to see that this is written in two different ways. There's the first one and the second one. And the second one is written with one voice, and that just means that all the stems are pointing up. When you have notation with stems pointing up and stems pointing down, that's uh, two voices. Sometimes writing it with two voices, like a number one, can help to understand the groove a little better. So you see a number one, you can see that ostinato pattern real easily. One, two, and three, four, and one, if you just look at the notes with the stems up. Uh, the second way, um, the main groove written with one voice, you see that it's a little more difficult to see that um, ostinato pattern right away. However, when learning the groove, it's easier to think of the groove as just one voice altogether. You don't want to separate it in your mind into, okay, this hand's doing this, this is doing that. So the second way makes it a little easier to read. So you go ahead and look at whichever one of those you want. I'm going to slowly count this and walk through it. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four. Now that diamond note head represents a rim knock, and if you're not familiar with that from my other lessons, uh, you're just going to flip the stick around so the butt of the stick is at the rim, and you're going to find the sweet spot. Find where you like how it sounds. Now what's difficult about measure two and measure four is you're going to be going from the rim knock to the snare. So take a look at measure two. And then you've got to get back to a rim knock. Same thing with measure four. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. You'll see on the sheet music, I put some other grooves on there for you. I even uh, notated out a YouTube cover version that somebody did with a temple block, and I put the link to that too. So check that out. And again, thanks to Lee for uh, suggesting this. Don't forget to check out OnlineDrummer.com for the latest sheet music. We've got sheet music going up every Friday, Saturday. And Steve Lay has awesome sheet music analysis on Sunday, which includes an analysis of a song, including the sheet music. Uh, we just did Paramore. Um, and the week before that, he did some ACDC, some yellow cards. Check it out. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Keep drumming.